Yeah. Yeah, I think it was all right there. All right. Um, welcome to another episode of Over the Bar. Um, big, uh, big week to recap last week. Um, we'll be getting into those a uh, couple of those matches. Um, some breaking news that came through uh, recently involving Barcelona. And obviously, we'll get to our match picks later. And we also have a an update on where Sal was uh, for this past week. Um, he was in a uh, uh, in Las Vegas. Um, we'll figure out what he did during his trip to uh, to Vegas. Um, but first things first, um, LFC United. Um, what a what a game that was for me. Um, didn't see it that much of a blowout coming, but I don't think anybody did. But uh, you're, I'll let you guys start with your take on that on that game that will probably go down as one of the most memorable LSC versus United games. Did you catch any of it? Nope. No, I didn't catch many games, and it's going to be a recurring theme for this one. <laughs> I, I, I was in a, we'll, we'll get into that later. Yeah, that that time difference and yeah. just the, you need to tell the me, timing of that trip. That you need flight. to tell me you didn't wake up at, at like four a.m. in the morning to watch Chelsea. I was still awake. Oh, you were. Yeah. So you, I, you I didn't stay up. I caught <laughs> there, yeah, I caught some of it for sure in the state I was in. I yeah. tried my best. From what I heard, it was about noon. noon. <laughs> Physically speaking, yeah, the state you're in. Sleep at noon. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? What, you caught the game, though, right? I think yeah, you were, you were here for the game. There, there might have only been like two or three Liverpool fans in here. That's all we need, baby. And I mean, there were probably twice as many United fans, and it was, it was a depressing mood. But I was, <laughs> I was trying hard not to laugh. And Matt picked four one for that match. And I had the five goals. Every, yeah, everyone thought you were kind of crazy for going that big with it. I was just being selfish, looking for the draw. <laughs> I, I didn't see United even standing a chance, and I don't see them standing a chance in their next couple fixtures. So I mean, we'll go over those later. But um, there was no way in hell Liverpool would lose in this game. Um, did not expect the, uh, them to get off the, the jump that early with you know two goals in the first 18 minutes, roughly. Didn't see that coming. Um, four by the half I thought was astronomical in, in the fact that we beat up on them. Like, we beat up on them bad. Physically speaking... Um, I thought we were 10 times better on the ball. At one point, they had Luke Shaw as the one main center back on a break for Liverpool, who had Trent Alexander-Arnold, Andrew Robertson, Navi Keita, and Mo Salah. Four on one for the first goal. I've never seen anything like that before out of a Klopp team since, you know, four years ago. Beat down. Absolute beat down. Never saw that coming. Uh, that, did that United. <laughs> that, yeah, right? And uh, the big question now – We'll go over the Pogba red card in a little bit, but I'll lay in. <laughs> Everybody oh, seems please. to be all in, right? Least, at least until we play them. Was it end of November? Yeah, you guys are coming. You guys are coming up. I think in a couple weeks. Oh yeah, just stay in. I don't want some like new manager. Oh, we're good again. Because you know yeah, it's only going to be a good manager. Yeah, if they bring in like Antonio Conte or something like that. Yeah. Like, well, I mentioned the one last week. Zinedine Zidane. Don't say it. Yeah, so even Zidane. Anybody other than the PE yeah, teacher. <laughs> I wouldn't entirely mind Zidane. I would stack up Tuchel against Zidane. I've thought about it more. I wouldn't totally mind I it. think he'd figure, he'd figure it out a lot easier, or figure it to be a lot harder of a challenge. He's more of a man manager. I mean, he's never been lauded for it. Oh, he's a, he's a man manager that won three straight championships. Yeah, he's, a, he's more of a Cristiano Ronaldo manager. <laughs> he didn't which, have that week-in, week-out grind of a domestic league no, at Real no. either. He didn't have half the stuff that they go through. To a the degree, PL. they had so, busy fixture. But, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, their busy fixture is one Champions League match a week and one domestic league match a week. So yeah, and they can rotate heavy. Yeah, so I mean, they I think this will be a challenge for him if he wants to, you know, actually go through with a challenge. Who knows? Yeah, but um, I think that would be the right manager. Conte, I'd like Conte. Um, if you guys remember, he does already have a United jersey in his closet. When that media member gave him one. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. that could be an interesting one. Anybody else you think out of? Out of those two, two guys, scrap them. Anybody else in particular you think could take that job? Anybody that's that may not be free at the moment. Anybody that's not free, you think could take that job? I have a two in mind. I have two in mind. One of them might surprise you. Is it Poch? One of them Poch. One of them is Pochettino. Why would he go? Why would he trade up? That's the thing. Is he's got the dream scenario. It's Messi, Neymar, yeah. and Mbappe. Why? He's got the best team, but the Premier League is the league you know he wants to be in. You know he wants to coach in that league. 
will he take that challenge? He wants to be at United. United want him. They tried to give it him, you know, previously. So it's a possibility. That's one. Can't rule anything out. Anybody else you think that could be involved in that? That's that's not that's already might might already be. I don't think Tuchel. If that's what you're thinking. No, I don't think too. Um, I can't I can't think off the off the top of my head. Would would you consider it if Frank Lampard was in the running? He'd never do it. I think he would. I think he would. I don't think they would go from Ole to to Frank. I think they would want they would want someone of Antonio Conte's caliber. Because that's really what they're missing. I think a proven they, winner. Yeah. What they're going to do, though, and I, I think you guys might agree with this, what they're going to do, though, is they're going to pick whoever Cristiano wants. Oh, yeah. Right? He's going to want it, But it, does it really matter who they who they want? It's going to be whoever he wants. How it's long gonna is he going to really be exactly. Cristiano? How long is that manager really going to be? You know? well, he didn't look like Cristiano on Sunday. That's for damn sure. Best, the most shots he had on target was on Curtis Jones, and he was kicking him in the nuts. Should have been red. Should have been red. Should have been red. Should have been red. Six was a big. Phys- I wonder how that would work with Chris, with Ronaldo as as that, as that main striker for him. I mean, look, he's all about the main striker. Look what he did with Lukaku. Yeah. I mean, he literally got Lukaku that move back to Chelsea. I don't think Chelsea take him back without his performances the last two years. Did you see the non-red card by Ronaldo? No, uh, should have been a red. He basically kicked. Curtis Jones. Oh, no, no, three, I three, yeah, 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 three yeah, times, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know how that's not a red. Yeah. Um, but then the again, name on his jersey. And that's yeah, it. right. And that the, it. No be, one, no one would be watching that match anymore. And the, the Cristiano's crazy, off, and they're down five 0 The craziest part is that that uh, free kick that was awarded to Liverpool and resulted in most Salah's second goal. Yeah. <laughs> the, ball, the possession they got from that ended up with a goal. So. Um, yeah, screw you, Cristiano. You see, Greatest. he uh, announced that they're expecting twins. Oh, yeah? Which, with, uh, with two shirtless pictures. Is it his actual wife this time, or is it some other chick from... What I, I saw know was in the US partner. Anymore. Partner, yeah. This this partner, yeah. I'm sure, he, I'm sure he's having... Two yeah. shirtless photos of himself to celebrate two more children. <laughs> How many kids has he got? Does he have? Congratulations. He's got more than he knows what to do with, right? Yeah, he can't afford I think these will be five and six. Five and six. I think there were four young children in one of the shirtless photos. So I'm sure the oldest one is just sitting there, like my inheritance yeah. is splitting. Cristiano Junior. Yeah, my inheritance is splitting. He's at the um, he's at the uh, Man United Academy. Dude had like the, the kid had like seventy something goals yeah. last year, and then like the under tens or something like that. Oh, I'm sure he's been personally. I'm sure yeah. his father Perth wants him yeah, to be sure. better than him. Anyway. Yeah, but I mean, come on, that's that's nuts. That's a nuts stat. Um, but speaking of you know red cards that did happen, the red card on Paul Pogba, um, terrible red card. Vegan boots apparently don't save you from reds. Um, straight red for me. Did you think of straight red? I know you watched the game. Watching it live, I didn't really think too much of it. And then that first replay, just they've given reds for it before, and they should because it's reckless. Two footed over the ball. Yeah, yeah, that's that challenge. That'll very, get you a red every time. Yeah. You should know better. Navi Cato back in training today, so that whole stretcher thing was a <laughs> kind of a show, I think, to get the red card, which good. That'll get him three matches. Did you see the shin pads he wears? The size. Oh yeah, they're just big. <laughs> It's like a, that's, that's what they're using now, the old iPad, iPods. Takes, that's takes a deck for. of playing cards and just tape yeah. them to your leg. <laughs> you can even see the ring of tape that goes around it. Yeah, that was a pretty bad uh, pretty bad tackle other, uh, uh, otherwise. Um, so we went over Ale, we went over United. Um, Chelsea dominated this week, 7-0 over Norwich. Absolutely crushing a team of scrubs. Um, they might as well. They might as well just know they're getting relegated at this point. Why even try? How Daniel Farkas sells a job is beyond me. Um, but you guys, your take um, on the uh, on the Chelsea seven 0 game, which wasn't much of a game after what a half an hour. Yeah, um, didn't expect seven with not. both of our strikers yeah. out for at least probably a week. Yeah. But if that anything that shows that Chelsea can play without a main striker. Yeah, we just they're deep enough both, to both to make two runs in Premier League and Champions League at the yeah. same time. Would you say that that's probably is that the is that the number one strength that that, that could get them a, a title this year? It has to be depth. Yeah, a lot you of know? I mean a lot of the top teams you see them with some upset players because they're not getting the playing time that they want. 
but that's just life at a top club. If you want to be a top club, you're going to have great players on happy at times. That's why you really need a man manager like Zidane because you know that it is in that same kind of area where their team's incredibly deep, in, especially in the attacking areas. So if you get a manager in there who handles the X's and O's and handles all the players well, then you're getting the best out of whoever you put out there. Everybody stays ready. Everybody buys into like one team, one dream concept. Yeah, we were talking about a couple of days ago, I think maybe a week ago, about uh, how the the left back, the left wing back role is that competition there is really benefiting. How many goals have we gotten from the left wing back alone this season? Chilwell and Alonzo, right? They've been scoring. Yeah. Like, hey, but that's like they're one upping each other each time. So, like, Marcus Alonzo comes on, he scores a banger, you know, like, and Ben Chilwell's like three, on a heater. three and three in the Prem right now. Yeah. yeah. Can name name the last left back that's done that. I can't think of one. He's just he's, actually cool. he, yeah, he's just dialed in, you know, and and right now he's keeping Marcus out of the team. So let me ask you this then: we but, talked about depth. I'm going to give you three scenarios. You tell me which team has better depth. First one: Chelsea United. Who's got better depth? You know, oh, Chelsea, 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 all over the field. Chelsea, 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 Liverpool. Who's got better depth? Chelsea, all over the field. Same Chelsea. Again. Chelsea, Man City, who's got better depth? City. I think it's closer than you think. It's, I think it's closer than you think. Like if now if they still have Leroy Sané, that's tipping that's tipping it more to City. So I just yeah. think we have better quality players all over the pitch. Attacking options, I think you guys are close, really close. They have a lot on what, the defensive side. That's in the central midfield. Think. They've got goal scorers and creators that's in central yeah. midfield. Yeah. We have a lot more. You got a lot of guys that are more plug game. and place. You know, yeah. like like Loftus Cheek. I think plug and place number eight. Um, I don't like know. Chelsea has that real like pressing midfield, where yeah, City is a creative possession midfield. Yeah. You can't really. I don't think like, and this may may sound bad, but you take Ilkay Gundogan out of that Manchester United Manchester City team, you put him on that Chelsea team. Ooh. I don't think he fits as easily as no. as you think. You know, I think he fits them, and I don't. I, don't, I think the certain players with Chelsea. Fit yeah, Chelsea agree, It'd in, be fun to in, try in the midfield. Like we don't have that like killer goal scorer in midfield. Sometimes it's <laughs> amount. That's what I'm saying. Now we're starting to see Rubens. I don't want to say it because I've said this too many times in the past years. But Ruben is a player that Sean and I are big fans of, and we know he's going to be. He's a good player. He's just going to be if he gets a run of games and he stays fit. He's going to be one of the best midfielders in the Premier League. That's always been his thing. If he stays, if he stays fit. fit. Um, do you count Kai, uh, Kai Havertz as a midfielder? He can play in midfield, but like Frank tried that with him as an eight in the in the in the four three three. It didn't really number ten suit him best. Though? I think number ten is probably his best position. Yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, I mean, kind that of, kind of inverted winger that yeah, the two of them goes with the was it the three four <laughs> two one? Because yeah. I think that'll give you more options Kai to play up front then, right? Yeah, and open it up for guys up front like Pulisic and Werner and. You know, Listen, so yeah, I've been waiting for that guy to come back, man. I, you know, he trained today. I know, I know, but it's just it's just the cycle of oh, he, he he trains, he comes back, he's shaky at first, then starts to get a good run of games and injured, and then repeats. you know what that means though? That that means there wasn't he's enough gonna... depth. Now we have the depth that he doesn't have to feel like he's rushing back. Like the team doesn't necessarily need him right now. I think we have to start talking about Mateo Kovacic a little bit. Good player. One goal and five assists in the Prem. But he, I don't, I, I, I reckon he didn't even get five assists last all of last season. How not in the Prem? I don't know why you mean or why you said start talking. About I know, no, but I'm saying like table. that thing that we always said about Kovic, Kovacic was like, I'd like to see a little more end product, like some more creativity, something adding directly to the games. And now he's, he's kind of doing like his ball, like those long balls. He's just been chucking through the defense. Long balls. Yeah, they, it's, it's, that's exactly what it is. And Sound they're like dropping the reference. And they're uh, and they're 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 accurate. And they release the, the the attacker. That's what we've been calling out for. And he's been doing it so more so it, than any other midfielder. Do so you think a goal and five assists in the prem? He's got a goal and five assists in the prem. So I said, Match rating seven eight one. He's been he's been he's been really good according to the bot mob. Mm. Good app, by the way. If you haven't downloaded that app, download that app. It has its moments for sure. Oh, it's right sometimes. Um, I still use it every day. So with Chelsea's win, United losing, Liverpool winning, City uh, beating Brighton on the weekend, 
three team race being kind of solidified. United is out. United, by the way, tied on points with Arsenal. I think they're only a manager away. Arsenal have some from competing for this too. from competing this season. Yeah, from getting back into that top four at least. Top four, I can see, but top three title race, they're out. Right? We can we can solidify that they're out. Ten games in, whatever it is now. Who? Manchester United. I no, I never say that. Like, yeah, I wouldn't rule them out after. So volatile. I'm ruling them out. Yeah, it's only any more of the season. Get, get, I mean, like you, Van Dyke could go down again, and then down. But down, and but they're not going to beat Chelsea and Man City. They're not going to win a title. They're only three games no. back with 28 left to play. The only way the only way they they, they come back it. is two significant injuries for Chelsea, two significant injuries for City, two three significant injuries for Liverpool. That's the only way they get back in this. I think if they get the right, if they get. Say Antonio Conte. I think if he comes in, he can get him top four. They're definitely okay. top four, and they're competing for top three spots. Yeah, like maybe well. they make it to the semifinal of the Europa. That's the thing. You got to bring him in before you end up in Europe. Club like that's, that's, that's they worse have to than make Ali, the move. Though. Ali got him to the final. If they don't make the move, they don't make it to the knockout stage of Champions League. I would honestly, if they do, I would yeah. love nothing more. And I'm gonna say this. Maybe I already said. I would love nothing more. That Manchester United to have to play in the Europa League with Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, I would love that. I, I would. I would. It would bring joy to my heart. I would that's, watch. That's I would buy. Tale. You know what we'll do? I would buy the jersey of every team they're playing, like Kazakhstan United or something yeah. like that. Buy the jersey of that and just come and support them. You know. Yeah. As as they uh, take on United every just week. One, just what like I, I have. I mean, I do. I do feel bad for some Man United fans that I know, and, and that that Liverpool, I and mean, that's gotta hurt. I re- I remember very well the feeling when City just destroyed us. Yeah, and just I feeling so. Game, de- yeah, I think I remember just that. being so dejected and hopeless. Yeah, but they're United fans. Yeah, but United fans are like they're kind of the worst on Twitter. They are the worst. And they they are the worst. I would say them, and I would say City fans too are pretty bad. Maybe it's there's something in the water in Manchester. I don't know. But city fans seem to just clout that. Liverpool, Liverpool fans. Uh, this is what they do, though. Like you could just be like, my, it's a conversation. No one mentions Liverpool, and Liverpool fans just pop up like, "Hey, we exist. Hey, what about us? Hey, notice me, mom. Watch my dive." Oh, no, my usually mom. it's it's uh, six UCLs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's six. what we start with. Do you ever see that meme of like the dude peeing in the urinal, and it's like the empty urinal, and he's just by himself, and a Liverpool right fan comes right next to him, he's like. Six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take that. I'll take that. Could be worse. Could be Arsenal fans too. Um, they're 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 uh, they're falling into the ground. You can't find them anywhere. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> um. So let's let's go over uh, so that that title race. Obviously, three teams. Um, one big move that was also made recently. Um, actually today. Um, in Barcelona, Ronald Koeman out overnight and in reportedly um, comes Xavi uh, to take over the reins and, and see if he can straighten out this Barcelona side that just lost again this past week to a uh, Radamel Falcao-led uh, squad in Rio Vallecano. So that's a, that was – I don't know if you guys watched that game. We got a chance to even sneak peek that game, but it was it – was, Good game. Fifth place, Ryo Viacom. Yeah, fifth place. I mean, I don't think first in that league just won today. Real Sociedad won again, two 0 over Celta Vigo. That that league, man, it's shit. It's shit. La Liga is shit this year. This year, most years, but this year in particular, this might be the worst league. This might be worse than France. Or is it now a case where they're doing what the Premier League has? Your top teams aren't just running away with it every year. You have some of those well, your smaller teams, money clubs that are racking. You know, your top TV teams don't money. have the talent anymore. I, I mean, name me a player on Barcelona. I mean, outside of maybe one or two guys and and De Jong and and maybe Pedri that you really want on your team. And Sufati. is he going to be healthy? He was he wasn't healthy for over a year. You He's know, young enough that he can get healthy. The, the other one would probably be Osmani Dembele, another guy, injury concerns. I don't know if there's another guy in that on that team I would even take. I wouldn't even touch. Ter Stegen? When you've Stegen. got keepers like Chelsea and Liverpool, do you don't really yeah. need Ter Stegen, but it's not like you wouldn't want him. The only guy I really want on that team right now is Petri. I think that dude's – that dude's a, a – speaking of Xavi, I mean, that's a guy, that's a guy I think is going to be the closest thing to him. 
especially what I've seen. So the guy's only 17 years old. Yeah. What a player he's going to be. Baller. You know, he's got a little, got a little shoddy in him, got a little um, Iniesta, you know, kind of do it all. Um, but yeah, big move. Your take on that move, though, coming out. Oddly enough, a year to the day, Laporta left Barcelona. Huh. A year to the day, exactly. Coincidence. I would say it can't get any worse for Barcelona. Like, what, why not shake it up? And that might, if anything, what I've learned with, with the Frank, when Frank came on, we were in a bad way. Loss Eden Hazard, transfer ban. Spirits were low. Then you appoint Frank Lampard, and then everyone gets galvanized as they get behind that because they love Frank Lampard and they love yeah. Chappie. You know, like he's like he's a club legend. He's if Frank started out good, what Frank started out and it, really there, good. There was pop. The first season was was up and down for sure, but like no one saw us. Remember the banter? Oh, Chelsea are going to finish tenth. Yeah. Chelsea are going to finish eleventh. I actually not going to lie. Last year I had Chelsea winning the league. I had Chelsea winning the league last year. Oh well, yeah, and they they were pulling it off for me until November. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's when we signed all those players. Like I have her, Simo Werner. It looked very formidable. Yeah, yeah, yeah was, expectations shot up, and yeah, which is things happen. Which is rightly so. I mean, you did we did we spent two hundred and fifty mil and bought some some of the most wanted players in Europe. You know, what are your expectations now for the rest of the year for Barcelona? Do they obviously? I think. Maybe trophy is kind of far fetched at this point, right? The what? You're getting a trophy? Is there a possibility? This I, I the league. I think you can they throw can get right a ribbon, out, right? ribbon for most improved. <laughs> and they're only nine points. Like if, trophy. if they win their next match, they're only six points out of first place. They can still do it. Yeah. Are they? Are they better than Real Madrid? Real Madrid aren't even the leaders right now. They would have to win their next match to. Stay top on goal difference. Neither team, like when we played Real Madrid last season, you're not like, afraid of them. I wasn't afraid. Like, remember back in the day? Oh my God, Real Madrid! How are we going to get through this? Yeah. Chelsea? How can Chelsea beat Real Madrid? Yeah. Just smack them around a bit. Dude. Yeah. Like five years ago, where everybody that you play against online in FIFA is either Real Madrid or Barcelona. It's infuriating. You never yeah. see that anymore. Right now, now it's PSG. Liverpool, Man City. I never got PSG in FIFA. We'll, we'll go over that FIFA thing next. Who do you play within FIFA? Do you have an Chelsea. ultimate? Do you guys have an ultimate team? No, no. I, I, I play career mode, man. Career mode? I like career mode. Career mode's good. I just uh, I'll go over my ultimate team. I think I did something. I something kind of smart this week. Um, we'll go over that in a second. Players. It's part of it, um, but there's there's a way behind it that I got all those Liverpool players. Um, Real quick, Sal, I want to go over your your time, uh, your escapades, your Sal capades in Vegas. Um, I'll tell you what I can. <laughs> what what happened? Um, you survived. That's that's survived, one thing. Yeah. Do you have all ten fingers? I do. You do. I do. Okay. Um, so give us the lay down on your your Sal capades. Uh, I got in one in the morning, Vegas time, uh, Friday night. We walked around old Vegas and then uh, found this cool. Like rooftop hotel, no, not hotel, a uh, bar. So it had like a cool view of the skyline. It was sick. I mean, the whole weekend that night, I did try to catch the Chelsea game. I straight, so I'm like, it's like 4:30. Game comes on. I have the app on my phone. I pull it up, and I'm I'm under the influence at this point. I'm not. I'm not. You know, not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm. You're what, an adult in Vegas. You're yeah, not sober. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sober yeah, at all. Let uh, the man have a beverage. Uh, yeah. But I was just too. <laughs> yeah, beverages. Beverages. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'm like, I pulled the phone, you know, pulled up on my phone and I try to focus, but they're just so like, they, it's like a night, there's a club, like a DJ, a really good DJ right next to me. And I'm trying to watch the game because I, I wanted to see this game. I thought it was going to be, you know, a goal fest. I didn't know then. It's like that. So I, you know, I pay attention for like a little bit. And then I, I just, but I am watching. So I'm dancing a little bit. And each time I, the, the, we score a goal, I'm like, Oh, Chelsea scores, you know, or I, I make some acknowledgement, or I show somebody, hey, Chelsea just scored again, you know. <laughs> but so also at seven, I, like, I might. I was like, I want some good stuff. <laughs> it looks like seven. <laughs> some good beverages. Yeah, I want some good beverages. <laughs> this looks like seven mil right now. <laughs> Bartender, give me another. <laughs> yeah. 
over all uh, over all the great time in Vegas. Oh yeah, it was good. By by night three, I was kind of like, oh, I need I need rest and I need home. But uh, like Vegas is a terrible, terrible, immoral place. But how long was the flight? It was four and a half hours or so. That's not bad. Was it direct? Direct. The flight there was. I didn't sleep a wink. Everyone else I was with got a little sleep. I did not sleep even a wink. It was a terrible plane ride. Because <laughs> what airline? JetBlue. Damn you, JetBlue. Yeah, it was it had nothing to do with them. I was just wired, you know. But uh, like, like, what'd you do all day Friday besides skip the podcast? Uh, prepare. I had so much to do before I left. Uh, you had to bleach. I had, yeah, I had to bleach. <laughs> um, Saturday I went to EDC. I had a, uh, a meltdown because I lost everybody. No, a little panic attack. I had a mild <laughs> panic attack because I lost everybody. Yeah, heard in a crowd of like 150,000 people. Yeah, you were only able to find the group because of a particular costume. A particular costume. I yeah. saw that. Did our boss have a pencil costume? On? Uh, uh, it was a number two pencil. Shot, I appreciate it. It was. It was, yeah. it was the. Uh, what was it? So I, I think maybe did you post it or Callan on on Instagram? Just like, like what an absolute pencil. Yeah, no, it was funny. just sounds like a proper. It saved my life. I English felt like I, I, I just could, I couldn't find anyone, and it was nice. But easy to find a, a pencil. Well, it's not easy to find anything there because uh, being that you had to squint because my I did not have the the yeah. clearest of vision, and it was super dark. To my knowledge, there are a lot of people dressed up as like bananas yeah. and stuff just like that. Fighting through endless human chains was annoying. Like just oh, it was just, yeah, just yeah. by the end of it, I was like just I hate just, that. I, I hate just want to be locked in a quiet room. By myself, and I are those the like worst this. people at concerts? The one that kind of block everything off? The chain people. The chain people. They chain are the, they are some of the bad people. I chain gang sucks. Yeah. Oh, well, it, it was a lot of fun, you know. Uh, I don't really like being Gordon Ramsay's restaurants are terrible. What's that? Gordon Ramsay's restaurants are awful. Oh, did it's you go? Is it yeah, like we a Hell's to, Kitchen one? one? No, we went to like some. It was in Caesar's Palace. And just like if you want a burger that just tastes like a like a salt crystal. <laughs> I know where to go. I can yeah, we got a, a pork bike. roast going at home right now. Oh, oh, no. Pork yeah. roast. I believe that he calls it Norwich. That pork roast. <laughs> no. We're not eating canary tonight. <laughs> um, let's go over. Uh, let's go over to this this week's games. We're gonna we're gonna slim it down. It's slim pickings this week because the Sunday slate of games is just Poo-poo. shit. Um, so it might be fun to watch. For it might some be fun people. to watch. Um, Fine, we'll go over those. We'll do those real quick. Just do scores. Ah. We'll just do scores. Um, easy one, uh, I think, at least for me. In the morning, Saturday, 7.30 a.m., uh, Leicester and Arsenal. Score prediction? Uh, 4-2 Leicester. No, 3-2 Leicester. I'm going to go 2-1 Leicester. So we all got Arsenal losing. By the way, Arsenal have won or drawn their last 10 games. So they're coming into this one. A little bit of a streak, um, so we're uh, we're we're all taking Leicester on that one. Uh, next one there, 10 a.m. Start of the 10 a.m. window. Burnley, Brentford. Um, oh, that's poopy. Poopy game, yeah. Um, speaking of poopy, I'm gonna go two nil Brentford. Yeah, that sounds about right to me for the bees. Right two nil, two nil. Um, next one on the match. Now we start getting into some of the big teams here. Um, next one there is Liverpool Brighton uh, at 10 a.m. as well. 4 1 Liverpool. 4 1? 2 1 Liverpool. I'm going to go 3 1. Um, so we at least see Brighton getting a goal. By the way, Liverpool look like they're getting uh, Fabinho back this week. So Fabinho's coming back. Um, hopefully he'll sit in the bottom of that six, at that six spot. I might hold him back a little bit. <laughs> I'm just hoping we get a chance. I just want to see. Fabinho, Thiago, Keita midfield just once. So last time we did it, we, we were on fire. Um, Come on, you singles. <laughs> so 2 1, 3 1, 4 1. Man City Palace, the other game, one of the other games at the 10 o'clock window. 2 2 draw. Wow. So you know, there's something about Crystal Palace and Man City sometimes. You know, we both picked City to lose to Brent, Brightford, uh, Bright, Brighton this last week. Um, we both lost, but. Um, I'm going 2 2 draw. It's got to be coming soon, right? They got to get a loss somewhere in here. I'm going. Total I'm going three nil city. Three nil city. Three nil city. Palace will look good, but it's it's at the Eddie Hat. Palace can't really. They have, I like that Edward that they have. He's good player. he's good a good player. goal scorer, but I don't see them scoring very many. 
if they get one, they'll maybe get one against City. Yeah, and they're, they're not going to get more than one goal. There's no way now they'll get more than one goal. They could. Um, I'm going to go 3 0 City. Um, I can't see. I can't see Palace putting up a fight there. Um, next one, you guys, Newcastle, Chelsea, 10 a.m. I don't know. Oof, that's a tough one. I'm going to say 4 0 Chelsea. I'm going 2 0. I said the same thing last week against Norwich and then. Turned out seven nil. So I'm gonna keep predicting <laughs> keep two nil alive. until we don't score seven keep, goals. Keep, keep that up, Sean. I'm gonna go four uh, one, Chelsea. Um, I think you guys will probably give up a stupid. You think goal Newcastle will concede against the best defense in the Premier League. I, I, I it might be an. I own just goal. wanted to phrase the question. It might, it might be an own goal. I just want, yeah. If, if, yeah. if anyone's gonna score our goals, it's gonna be me. Yeah. <laughs> own goals. <laughs> What's that? What's that saying from the dodgeball? Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. Yeah. <laughs> that's essentially that's essentially Chelsea's defense. Um, Watford Southampton, uh, the last of the ten a.m. games. Southampton. Oh, Watford. I'm thinking Watford too. After last week's comeback, four goals in twelve minutes. It'll be like a two-one Watford. Go on, Watford. Got a feel about it. I'm gonna go draw. Actually, I'm gonna go one-one draw. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go one-one draw. Um, what did you say? Uh, I'm gonna say I forgot what I was gonna say. Your guys sound way better. I think you took Southampton. Yeah, Southampton. I'm gonna go Southampton. Seven mil. Seven mil. Two weekends in a row. Call. There's never Good been call. two weekends in a row in the Premier League of seven mil games. By the way. Okay. Um, Tottenham Man United, the game of the probably the game of the week. Um, in all honesty, two shit teams come together for. Uh, that game. Uh, what do you guys think? Two two draw. Two two draw sounds good. It's cross two two draw. I'm gonna I'm gonna go three three draw. Three um, three. I think this is the game where Harry Kane finally shows up, and I don't know if he's playing this year at all, but he should show up for this one. I think Ronaldo also gets a goal because he's Ronaldo, and the referees are gonna find a way to give him a pen or something. Yeah. So I think this is the game where. Both these teams kind of at least get a point from each other. See what the hell happens, though. Um, the lady and the trampet, they just meet in the middle. Yeah, right? Yeah, pretty much. Um, two games on, on Sunday. We'll just quickly go score predictions. Uh, Norwich leads. Norwich losing. Shut out. Yeah, Norwich losing by <laughs> some amount of goals. Yeah. Um, I think we can all – Norwich losing on that one. Yeah. Uh, last one, Villa-West Ham. Pretty decent game, actually. West Ham. West Ham 2-0. Two, 2-2 no. two, two draw. Three, three, two, West Ham. So that's that's a matchup for the week, guys. Um, we do have There's actually we do have one Monday Wolves Everton, pretty good game. Um, you want to do that one real quick? What do you got? I got Wolves. Wolves, yeah. yeah Wolves pull it out. Like a, um, like a gritty one nil or two one. I'm going one one draw. One one draw. I can't see I can't see either team really taking points out of this one, especially with the way both those teams played last week. Yeah. They both should have they both should have lost. Um, in all honesty, um, do you guys want to hit a couple Champions League games? Not only the big ones. Big ones. Chelsea Malmo. Yeah, it ain't big. <laughs> Scoreline might be. Scoreline might be. Uh, Man United Atlanta. Four o'clock on Tuesday. Atlanta. Yeah, they've. I mean, United's not going to want to fall behind two 0 again like they did yeah. the last time they faced each other. But Atalanta's not going to want to blow a two 0 lead either. They're going to want to get out there and they're going to want to reassert patient. themselves. They'll also believe they could do it again. I, I'm, I can see a draw on this one, two two draw again or something like that. Um, as far as that day goes, nothing else really jumping off the page. Uh, Wednesday, you got Borussia Dortmund and Ajax four o'clock. Um, that should be a good one. And you got Liverpool Atletico. Four o'clock. That's gonna be the big, That's gonna be the big one. I'm going Atletico. I think I think Ajax will beat Dortmund. In Liverpool, in, by the way. Yeah, sorry. Makes me want it more. Yeah, it makes me want it more, but it makes it less likely. I the same way I felt going into the Man United game, where I felt like Liverpool was gonna blow them away, I feel the total opposite about Atletico. I don't know what it is, but Simeone and his... They're no joke. Atletico's no they're joke. no joke, but I mean, like... Not anyone, on, not on just paper, anyone could beat them in the Champions League. On, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> on paper, Liverpool should be beating them, you know, 3-0, 3-1, something like that. This game's going to be close. I'm going to go 2-1, Liverpool. Um, yeah, I, then we, um, not much else going on rest of the week there. 
um, as far as everything goes. Um, so I'll leave you guys. I'll leave you guys with this. Um, <laughs> where was my? Uh, I'll let you guys uh, go off of what we had last week, which you missed. You missed last week, so. but last thing to take here, we all we picked our top five teams in the world. We both had PSG first, correct? I think you had Chelsea second. I have Liverpool power second. Ranking. Would you change any of your power ranking from last week? No. I would. I would change you just Chelsea above Liverpool. Just one. No, actually, it's moving Chelsea up, though. I moved Chelsea above Bayern. I yeah, have Chelsea, Chelsea from five fifth. to four. Bayern lost to fucking Glad, Gladbach, whatever the fuck they are. Um, lost to Gladbach, so. I think I would move Chelsea up to four. Chelsea wins seven nil. Seven nil. Bayern lose five nil. It's a twelve goal swing. I would I would move Chelsea up to four. Um, I just wanted to put Europe. Liverpool a second. Yeah, <laughs> champions of Europe and Premier League leaders were fifth and only moved up to fourth because they won seven nil and the other if team this lost was, five nil. If this nil. was a month ago, Chelsea would be second and Liverpool would be fourth. I just think on form right now. I even even given that game, I would move them up to fourth. When do we play again? Who? This Chelsea week? Liverpool. When do Chelsea I want to say it's like January second. January. Oh, right. I will be right eagerly on. awaiting. Uh, right, right as we lose players for Afcon. No Mo Salah. No oh, Sadio Mane. No Do we wait. not lose Edward Mendy for that? Oh yeah, you do. So, yeah, you get a free shot out of us. <laughs> yeah, you got baby legs. <laughs> so I don't want to hear it. Two right? X arms, Kepa and goal. Literally. Literally anyone you could you could shoot from midfield. But hopefully, I mean, there's rumor out there that Afcon may be postponed. So hopefully that happens. I'd rather see. I'd rather the game be at full strength. To be yeah, I'd I mean, be more fun of a game too. I mean, look at the, the the game last year that you guys won one nil. That was a boring freaking game. Really boring game. Um, there's no fans and half the players for both teams are kind of missing. So yeah. I would rather have a full full strength. Like look at the game we had a couple weeks ago. Was that not a, one of the more fun games? All year, even the with the red half. card, yeah. first even, half was fun. But even with the red card, I, I think with it was without still, that red card, I think Chelsea went on to win that game. Yeah, I don't know about that. You needed we'll a penalty our, to we'll score. Have you needed that red card to score. That was the only way that ball was going in anyway. And then couldn't score a goal yeah. with a man advantage for the entire second half. We haven't done that all year. We've had uh, three uh, man advantages against Chelsea, Atletico, and Manchester United. Have yet to score a goal. Have yet to score a goal. Unbelievable. I don't know how the hell they do it, but an open second like best we, team in Europe apparently. It is can't score with a man advantage. We only we like to do it at full strength. On, 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 on that note, on that note, that is uh, that is over the bar podcast for this uh, this evening. Um, Come eat some pork. So you're going home to eat pork. What do you have? Uh, I have not gotten food yet. That's I'm a going to get a burger. You're going to order from Annabelle's. That's your thing. I Seems to be your thing. I have to. Your gluten free sandwich from across the street. Hey, dude, that gluten free stuff. Even, uh, that oh, that pizza he had, two for one or something. Good pizza, man. Good pizza. Good pizza. Annabelle's. It is pretty good. Um, all right. So, well, yeah, we'll catch you guys uh, next week on Over the Bar podcast. Thank you guys for, uh, for listening. See you next week.